also resulted from covert sue-and-settle maneuvers. I don't think it is fair to ask hardworking job creators, farmers and ranchers of Northeast Georgia, or anywhere in this nation for that matter, to foot the bills for policies that bureaucrats secretly put in place. I am sad to report that the prevalence of these sue-and-settle agreements have only grown in recent years. In the second term of the previous administration brought us 77 sue-and-settle cases related to the Clean Air Act. By comparison, President Clinton's second term witnessed 27 sue-and-settle cases, and President Bush's second term saw 28 such cases. But let me also say just right there, Mr. Speaker, that it doesn't matter which administration or which party is in the White House. This is not a bill that is designed to go for one party or the other. It's simply saying that there's an Article I of the Constitution, and that is the legislative branch that writes the laws, that writes the laws, and then the uh, executive is to enforce the laws, not write them. This is, I want it to make it clear, and I know it's going to be talked about that this is not, but I do want to make that clear that this is for any uh, administration. The Obama administration's penchant for circumventing Congress and its constitutional authority was incredible, and its legacy has endured. The weight of these improper agreements hang around the necks of American businesses, employees, and farmers and ranchers. Fortunately, the Trump administration has recognized the impropriety of this practice and is taking steps to start curbing abuse of sue and settlement agreements and the federal rulemaking process. In fact, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt recently issued a directive to increase public engagement in policymaking at the EPA. This is a critical step and the one that I applaud, but it doesn't negate the need for Congress to act decisively. In fact, it only highlights it. 